Hey family, we're back. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, whenever it's these uh, really touchy, controversial topics, craziness like this happens. So I'm getting used to it. Hey D, what's up? D, you must be giggling to yourself right now. It's not even funny. <laughs> um, okay, so so. All right, so I'm going to start from the scratch. Um, um, uh, from scratch. So, a member of the family sent me um, a link to a video that had uh, a relationship expert couple, um, a power couple, uh, <laughs> you know, um, who, like, the husband normally gives advice to men on how to be a man and how to love your woman and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I've watched a couple of his vids and, like, you know, like, they're pretty cool. They're not necessarily scriptural. But, you know, like, he tries to, like, you know, format them as such, but they're not necessarily scripturally based. Sometimes he throws some secular thinking in there. And I guess, like, that that's the winning combo if you want to be popular these days. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, you know, he's doing his thing and I'm, you know, hey, you know, like, do your thing, bro. And uh, he, like, his wife decides to um, bring one of their conversations, private conversations, up in a public forum, not just on camera, but during a team meeting in their company. So, like, they own a couple of companies, and, uh, you know, like, while they're having their, their team meeting, she, she calls them out on a conversation they had the night before. Now, apparently, it goes a little something like this. She had asked him for an opinion on a video that she had shot for some content that she was going to post on her platform. The dude was like, yo, it's not your best work, but post it anyway because sometimes I feel like what isn't my best work or sometimes I feel like stuff that I put out is not my best work, but you never know, it may touch somebody who's watching or it may have the desired effect on you know, the consumer. So, you know, don't get too caught up in the production quality, you know, but rather focus on the message and just put it out there because you never know who it might touch. Now, hey, to me, thanks a lot. Now, as, as someone who does lives and someone who, who uh, produces content, I fully understand where he's coming from. And I'm sure it's something that D can also relate to. Because sometimes w w I'll do a live and I'll be sitting there on something like, this is the worst delivery, worst live I've ever done. And the next thing you know, I'm getting DMs from people on something like, yo, I needed to hear this. I need to hear this. I need to hear this. Okay. So the point is, it's never really about you. It's about the message and it's about how God chooses to use you. Sometimes we have an idea in our minds of how things are supposed to go. But, you know, many other plans are in our hearts, but God's will is what prevails. And when we're doing his work and when we're doing anything really, you know, because like scripture says, everything we do, we need to do as though we're doing it unto God's glory. So anything we do, we need to have that kind of mindset. Do your best for the day. Your best for the day may not be sterling, but at least you've done your best for the day and God will use you. Okay. Thanks, D. <laughs> um, so anyway, this this is what the guy was trying to tell his wife. She goes off on some, yeah, but you know, you're undermining my inner greatness and my, 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 you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a superstar. You know, um, I don't just drop filler material. I don't just drop random songs. I drop hit after hit after hit after hit. Okay, that's ego. And then, like, it's not just ego in what she's saying. It's not just pride in what she's saying, but also the fact that she's refusing to listen to what this guy is saying. So, three things are happening here. First of all, it's all about her. It's not about, you know, those who need to be served. Secondly, it's not about the team, her and her husband. It's not all about me. It's not about the vision. It's not about protecting the marriage. It's all about me. Then thirdly, it's about bringing outsiders into something that really should be private. 
So the guy keeps trying to say, yo, listen. Because like she's basically saying, you are promoting mediocrity. You're telling me it's okay to be mediocre. The guy never said that. And this is the angle that she takes throughout the entire video. I was cringing the whole time. And the guy's keeping his cool, but now she's starting to like throw in some manipulation by crying. Oh, you know, you hurt me. And I, I mean, you know, like, you're supposed to tell me this. You're supposed to. No, he's not supposed to tell you what you want to hear. He's supposed to tell you what is needed. And up until that point, that's exactly what he was doing. Then at some point, the guy decides he's going to apologize to her for her foolishness. So, no, I'm sorry for telling you that it wasn't mediocre. Next time, I'm going to tell you that your work is mediocre. And I'm, I'm on some, are you serious? So, <laughs> I lost all respect for the guy at that point. Because as a man, and for the fellas who are watching, those who don't know this, you're supposed to live with your wife with knowledge and understanding. Meaning you're supposed to know her and understand her, one. But you're supposed to know God's standard and understand God's standard, second. Actually, know God's standard, understand God's um, 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 standard first. And then know her and understand her second. Okay. So now, God's standard is be honest. Tell the truth. Which is what he did. Now he's apologizing for telling the truth. That's foolishness. We've been socialized now as men to, to like happy wife, happy life. Okay? No. You, your happiness means something to God, men. Meaning you need to be aligned with him so you can be happy. If you're walking in truth and your woman has an issue when you tell her the truth, my friend, protect your happiness. Protect your happiness. Because if you now start catering to her feelings as opposed to God's truth, you're now going to be trying to please her instead of God. When you start pleasing her instead of God, you will lose her. And you will lose God. Outside of him, you can do nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, if she's finding it hard to accept the truth, that's not your problem. You are washing her with a word. She's saying, hey, stop washing me. My friend, stop washing her. Now you're no, 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 baby, come back so I can wash you. What for? What for? Why are you begging? I'll explain. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, title, I don't talk to my hubby. Okay, you see, like, I don't want to say who it was. <laughs> you know, I wasn't trying to, but anyway. So, anyway. Guys, honestly, like, we need to learn to stand our ground. Okay, I'll give you some examples. David was busy praising the Lord. His wife, Michal, comes to him and ridicules him in public. For dancing so zealously for the Lord. Look at what ensues after that. He went and shut her up. Put her away. Because she was disrespecting him. And disrespecting God. She was dishonoring her husband. And dishonoring her marriage. The wise woman wife builds with her hands, the foolish one destroys with her tongue. Michal dis destroyed a marriage with her tongue. A lack of submission. I'll give some more examples shortly. Um, let me get back to this thing because I'm all over the place. So, anyway, the, the conversation continues. One of the workers, a guy jumps in talking about, oh, I love this. Because it's nice to see how a couple handles conflict and friction, you know, you know, and such. And like the way you're handling this is so mature. He's talking to the, uh, to the husband now. You're so calm and all that kind of stuff. And for real, up until that point that he apologized, I was, I was giving the guy kudos for staying calm and for staying, you know, like um, remaining the mature one throughout everything. But it was, it was when he apologized that I saw now Jezebel. 
Jezebel. And at no point in the video does she apologize for the way she spoke to her husband and the fact that she didn't even check with him before bringing up this conversation because she admitted that, you know, like, I kind of dropped this on you without checking in with you first. She ambushed him in front of the team. Okay? Oh, D! Leave me alone. <laughs> okay? All right, you know, like, someone... D, please tell them what it is. <laughs> D Optics, please tell them what it is. Because, like, like, I ain't trying to say it. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not even trying to give them... Give them, you know. <sighs> so, <laughs> no, I lost all respect for the dude, honestly. Um, so now, after he apologizes, she jumps in on him harder. And just proceeds to just, like, she made no sense when she started. Because she's coming from a place of feelings and 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 uh, um, an ego and pride, and after he apologized, she made even less sense, and she got even more disrespectful. Because now, what she starts um, uh, doing is she starts taking comments from the team, and her sister jumps in, disrespects her husband in front of her. Okay. <laughs> And she's like, yeah. And then she adds to what the sister just did. Then someone else makes, makes some unnecessary comment and the guy's just sitting there the whole time saying nothing. And what really hurts me the most is how the wife on her flipping uh, platform edits the video in such a way that the husband looks like a wuss and a punk. She cast him in the worst light. I'm not sure if the conversation went down all the way like that, you know, like in real life, but the way it was edited cast them in a very bad light. Now, when you read the book of Proverbs, your wife is supposed to bring you favor. She's supposed to bring you good. Your wife is supposed to bring you no harm. She's supposed to protect your reputation, honor your reputation. By honoring you, she's protecting your reputation. Yeah, um, uh, World Diva, you're right. In his defense, he said, I'm in this room, I'm here. But you know why he had to say that? Because he's already proven he's not worthy of respect. For the sister to feel that comfortable disrespecting him means that the wife has been, like, has been disrespecting him in front of the sister for a minute. The, the sister should never have felt comfortable enough to disrespect him in his own company, in his own house. See, this is, so like, y'all want to talk about how Jeezy is, is, is uh, leaving to go and uh, hook up with Chinese women and everything. Me, I have never seen a Chinese woman disrespect her husband. I have never seen it. Never. Never. Maybe when they get home, you know, she pulls some Confucius on them. But in public, I have never seen it. The ones that I see doing it are the ones who are completely westernized. And those are the ones whose marriages don't last that long. You know, it was, it was, it was shocking. So like, now you want to be on some, yeah, well, the scary part is when people start calling out a Jeezy, for example, for, for, um, for, for hooking up with a non-black woman. They're going to be like, yo, there are queens like this chick out here. This guy's wife. What makes her a queen? Like the fact that she, she's got money. Having money doesn't make you a queen. D, listen, my friend. Uh, uh, jump on. Jump on now, D. <laughs> jump on. Let's talk about this thing, D. <laughs> Let's talk about this thing. Let's not waste time, my friend. Come. Come here. Help me. Come on, help me. Mm -hmm. Be because like it's 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 look and what broke my heart was now that we're talking about energies right her energy towards him was masculine well actually like a combination of feminine and masculine okay because like she was trying to be all bossed up and everything but she kept crying 
So the, like she was manipulating the situation. And he allowed it, which means feminine. Because in that moment, you see, like it's cool for a guy to have feminine energy, but you still have to be masculine. There's a difference between the energy and actually being masculine. You can be masculine while also you know, giving off feminine energy. I can be a father, I can be a man while holding my baby and nurturing my baby. I can still protect my baby as a masculine man while nurturing and caring for my baby. This dude was not even trying to defend himself. This dude was not even trying to be a man. What a man should have done in that, situa in that situation was, hey, listen, this is not the time or the place, especially in front of these people. I don't care if you think it's a, it's a, it's a teaching moment. I am not going to be disrespected in this fashion, not by my wife, and certainly not in front of my team. We're going to take this offline and have this conversation later on. If she resists, he needs to get up and walk out of the room and not engage her any further. Now, now watch the clowns among us are going to be on some, oh, but that is, that's just disrespectful of him to do. No, that's what the Bible says he should do. Rather than sit there and be disrespected by a contentious woman and have your buttons pushed by a contentious woman, walk out. Go sit in the corner of the roof someplace. Rather than engage this kind of woman. But the problem is because he's used to her dominating him, she dominated him again in public. And the sad thing is he's probably lost so much respect as a result of that. And someone was telling me um, that the, like, the, like a lot of guys were going on to the the uh, the uh, post talking about they want a woman like that. Who's talking? Hi hey. guys. Hey, my friend, are you here to help me? Hello, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. <laughs> my friend. Hello, my friend, my friend, my friend. Yo. Um. First of all, I'm ticked off actually because you've been ignoring me because you've been sick. And I get that. But you got so <laughs> irate that instead of pumping me for it, you jumped on and were like, I'm going to talk to y'all for a minute. So, Yo, I'll heat it. I'll, just just I'll, give me freaking source material so I can hop on and be informed. Okay. Having said that, that's a waste of time. All right. So I'm just going to preface this by saying I have not seen the clip. However, okay. someone just sent me the clip. Mm. That's good enough. Uh, joining what I know about the couple along with, uh, that's not even fair, um, from observing from afar, um, mm -hmm. along with what Kofi has already said, I'm, I'm prefacing this by telling you all, I haven't seen the clip. So I don't want to hear from anybody prior to, but you didn't even see the clip. You're absolutely right. Okay, having said that, there are a few things I have heard Kofi say that I just need to co-sign. Okay, the first one is we have an incredible misconception about what is desirable in a mate in the black community worldwide, globally. Um, without naming specific celebrities, because it tends to be the same thing, what we tend to do both with men and with women is we really think, and I think part of it is because of systematic racism, poverty, um, our disenfranchised communities, and so much of what we've experienced globally as people as color, because we've been down for so long, and no, everybody's not down, but because we've been down for so long, oftentimes what we regard as healthy, um, functional mates and spouses literally is only economics mm. it's only economics and so what we Come do this is so sad the Thank hard you. part about that is i understand while there's a very real fundamental need for us to be um safe in terms of economically safe and having our stability and being able to have homes and land and being able to provide for our children and to leave an inheritance for our children etc so being safe economically i'm not 
downplaying that, but I am mm -hmm. saying the position we've given it as people of color mm -hmm. is infatuated. It is exaggerated and it is dangerous mm -hmm. because we have so many men and women who only look at um, the number one, um, um, what is it? The number one, uh, uh, not admirable, but attractive trait that we look for in our spouse is money. And if I could tell you how many couples I have had come to me, or not couples, but singles, either the man himself or the woman herself by themselves. Mm -hmm. And what they are dealing with is total dysfunction in their relationships. Mm -hmm. But the man is a millionaire and he's throwing money at the woman, but mm -hmm. nothing else. Or the woman has been completely disrespected, dishonored, annihilated, embarrassed, um, ignored, neglected, abandoned by her spouse, but he's throwing money at her. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, the person with the money genuinely believes that because I am throwing money at my relationship, I am doing what I'm supposed to do. And or the person who is being fundamentally disrespected and disregarded as a human being, but is receiving gifts and cars and money and bags and blah, 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 blah is actually... <clears throat> It's not that they don't know that they're being disrespected or disregarded because they're coming to me because their heart is there. But mm -hmm. because the person is providing financially, there is a conflict there. And what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say is when you love someone, you love them and you treat them like they are loved fundamentally and you can't buy love, period. All right, now that I've laid that foundation, let's go into what Kofi said because I haven't seen it, but based solely on what he said and what shameless plug I am laying the foundation of in my women's group. If you don't know it, if you haven't joined it, $99 for a session, just join. DM me for details, Black Marriage Movement. Okay, what Kofi talked about that I have to say now is women need to be cherished and adored in order to feel loved. Men need to be respected and honored in order to feel loved. What I heard him say is what tends to come with a man who goes with a woman because of her money or because of what ladies hear it, men hear it. She can bring to the table that has nothing to do with what she's supposed to be bringing to the table, which is money and business and reputation and it's all finances and external stuff. So then what happens? That same man ends up allowing the person who has the money, the power, the prestige, the business, the et cetera, et cetera, that he knows he needs, which we all need, I already said it, for financial well-being, for safety, for stability, to be able to live and breathe in this world. Yes, that is a need. But when you begin exchanging that need for financial security with your need for respect and esteem and appreciation and admiration fundamentally from your woman? Ooh, we're in dangerous territory. We are in dangerous territory. And I am here to say for any woman on the planet who ever thinks I got the money, I went out here, I did it myself, I, I, you know, I got the job or I founded the company and therefore, and I found, you know, the, the, the angel investors and I found the seed capital and I raised the millions of dollars and now I'm doing all this stuff and I brought him with me. And now because I brought him with me, I'm teaching him how to, and let me just say fundamentally, yes, please, sis, do all of that. But, but if you think that because you've done all of that and you got all of that and you bring him into that that he now has to pay for that with being disrespected you missed it you missed it that did not buy you the right to manipulate to intimidate to seduce to get your way when you're wrong to disrespect, to annihilate, 
to put him down, to remind him every chance you get, to embarrass him, to annihilate his character, his honor, his spirit, his no, no, no. And this we have to speak to. You are no more in a position of right to do that. Then, now let's go to it. Then the woman's movement was founded on. The woman's movement was founded on us looking at the things that we did not like in men, because I, and I'm saying the things, because it wasn't everything. The things, the traits, the toxic things, not the healthy things, because there are healthy things, but the mm. unhealthy parts of masculinity that we did not like. We then created a movement to try to get rid of those things, not the things we liked, the things we didn't like. Now what do we do? We have this movement, and now that we have all this power and money and finances, and we've got all this education, and we're funding more businesses than men, and we've got more education than men, and we're doing better than men in so many different ways, and what are we doing? Exactly what we said we didn't like. Mm -hmm. What the hell? D, can I say something quickly? Yes, please. Look, for, like, First of all, like, let me just explain what masculinity is, okay? Masculinity, in a nutshell, speaks to the qualities that are appropriate in a man. Masculinity is a good thing. We need it. All of us need it. Okay. It speaks to the power of a man, the ability of a man, the virility of a man. These are all good things. When we start talking about toxic masculinity, you're saying that there is a toxic side to power or, or masculine power, that there's a toxic side to masculine virility, toxic side to um, 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 manly uh, uh, virility. The problem with that is this. It's false because these are all things that are appropriate to manhood. If they were inappropriate, if we're talking about what is un inappropriate, we'll talk about a man who does not have power. We're talking about a man who does not have an ability to do anything, and a man who's not virile, and a man who has the inappropriate qualities of manhood. That's okay. what I'm saying. I'm like, what we're talking about when we say toxic, because I'm not even mm. into all of this, but if I were, because I understand what they mean is a man mm. who has power and abuses it, but yeah. a man who has power and abuses it is no more lethal or detrimental to the body as a woman who now has power and abuses it too. No, no, definitely. I'm with you there. What I'm trying to say is, so um, I'm seeing, I'm seeing someone saying power can be misplaced. Okay, so here's the thing about power, right? The moment you exercise power without consent, that's called oppression. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you oppress somebody, you you have just invited condemnation on yourself from God, mm -hmm. because God goes to the oppressed. Mm -hmm. He sides with the oppressed. Okay. Mm -hmm. He hears their hearts. He hears their prayers. He he mm -hmm. wipes their tears away. All of that. He is an ever present help to the people y'all are abusing that you think don't have a helper. They run to God, and now he's after you. Okay. Exactly what D said. Now here's the problem. Just to just to like um um I'll piggyback of um of what D was saying earlier, like with the whole feminist movement. The problem with it is that it looks at the inappropriate qualities that males, not, not men, males and, uh, possess and engage in. That is not masculine. It's not by the masculine. Way, I said, by the way, I said, just so, and I'm just interrupting you a little. I said, <laughs> there are healthy qualities that men have, and we need those. Okay, go ahead. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm just, like, I'm just giving them like the dictionary definition. Okay, so so when you start focusing on, because like D, D actually set it up beautifully. She was saying when you look at slavery, when you look at the economic disparities and all of those kinds of things, that speaks to a lack of ability, that speaks to a lack of power, that speaks to a lack of virility, and it speaks to an inappropriate state of manliness. Okay, so that's not even masculinity. That's something else. That's an aberration. That's an abomination right there. So what you're dealing with is not masculine. You're dealing with something else. Then the sad thing is, just like Dee said, these, these feminists are going to look at these bad things and think that is masculinity. And then instead of saying, men, conduct yourselves 
in a masculine fashion, they're saying, you know what? Uh, this is ma this all like all this nonsense right here is masculine. Hence, toxic masculinity, which is an oxymoron. Okay. Um, and then they they say we don't want this. Then they themselves start engaging in this. That's it. We don't understand. We have taken on the things that we hate, the things we fought against. Now that we're in power, we're embracing. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Now, the, the sad thing about all these ladies is that when you do this, right, you say you want a man who is masculine, you know, in the true meaning of the word. Now, you're not going to get this guy because there is nothing feminine about you. Because you are shunning your femininity. You're shunning the appropriate qualities of womanhood. You're shunning the power of womanhood. You're sh shunning the ability of womanhood. You're shunning the, the uh, virility or, or the, uh, the potency of womanhood so that you can now begin to engage in the, in the toxic things that you, you, you erroneously think are masculine. So when you start oppressing men, you think you're being manly. You're not being manly. You're being disgusting. When, when, you, when you disrespect a man, when you talk to him because you think you're being assertive, you're not being assertive. You're being disrespectful and disgusting. Yes. The same way we react to a woman who talks to us like that, it's the same way we would talk, like, react to a man who talks or, or a male who talks to us like that. The difference is we're not allowed to put hands on you. But let a male talk to us that way. He will catch the beat down of his life. Can I? So can I, the, well, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, just in that one little place. Okay, so the part where he's talking about, you know, let a man talk to you that way and he will catch a beat down. Okay, here's something that feminists don't understand about scripture. When scripture talks about us being the weaker sex and they have brainwashed a bunch of you other ones to try to reject that. I'm not weak. Yes, you are. Embrace it. God knows you. Okay, so when he says that, what he's talking about is fragile, gentle, valuable, like crystal, easily breakable, mm -hmm. and... This is what's so beautiful. Okay, this is why I love God. This is why you gotta listen to God. Okay, so um, when God is talking about us being the weaker sex, what he's saying is, and notice in those passages, he's telling the man to um, approach us like the weaker sex. So what happens is, if the man approaches us like a weaker sex, then when we get into conflict with our husbands, with our fathers, with our with our with our spouses, with our with our children, etc., whatever, our uncles, our brothers, what happens is they now regard us as a woman. And so when we are in conflict, they are constantly reminded, this is a woman. She is the weaker sex. She is fragile. She is gentle. I need to be gentle with her. I can't speak to her the way that I speak to the boys on the court when I get into a battle with them. I can't speak to her in the way that I speak with my boys when we're like on the football field and I get into a battle with them. I can't speak to her uh, the way I speak to my boys when we're out hunting and I get into a fight with them. No, that's the first part, his conduct. The second part is our conduct. What do we do to make sure that the man that we love treats us in this way where he's going to speak to us gently and kindly and be softer with us and know that this is not my enemy this is not my equal so i don't go to war with her i gotta come down here and deal with her down here and be gentle mm -hmm. and soft and kind with her what can we do speak softly speak mm -hmm. kindly esteem him respect him honor him be gentle stay in your feminine energy yep stay in your feminine energy. Women have been taught by the feminist movement and by society that <sighs> succumbing to feminine energy is a weakness and it's not. What it does is it reminds the man in front of you, oh wait, that's my sweetheart. Wait, mm -hmm. that's my mom. Wait, that's mm -hmm. my sister. Hold up, that's my daughter. Wait, that's a woman. I can't talk to her the way that I talk to all these other people. So what does he do? Immediately, he comes from up here all the way down here, and you get a totally different man. And if you think you can't benefit from that, then I can't help you. Go ahead. Uh -huh. um, I see uh, 
<laughs> and I just talked about it this morning. Uh, Bunny Gosh is talking about. I feel like a lot of your conversations around relationships are towards correcting women. Thanks for the help. But why isn't it more balanced? It's always balanced. That's that's the first answer. The second answer is where there's a need, we're going to address it. And there is a huge need on the part of guys right now to have women understand what masculinity is, what manliness is, what being a husband is, and what it's not. Because a lot of women who think they know what being a wife is and what being a woman is and what being feminine is actually don't. Y'all are so misinformed around this thing right now. Like, if, if there wasn't a need for it, you wouldn't have people like Denai putting together courses on how to be feminine and how to deal with masculine energy. You know, most of, most, most, most of the issues that we have in relationships today is people not knowing even what love is. All I hear from people all the time, especially on this continent, in Africa, everyone keeps saying women are taught how to treat men. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're, they're not. Taught, they're, taught, they're taught a cultural paradigm, okay? Then, then they take that cultural paradigm and then they apply it globally and say that all men are like this. That's not true. That's what your culture taught you. That's what your tradition taught you. That's what your community taught you. That's what tradition teaches you. Now, on this platform, what we teach you is the godly standard. This is how God expects the sexes to relate to each other. And more importantly, this is how he expects the husband to relate to the wife. When he talks about live with her as the weaker vessel, he's not talking about every woman he comes across. He's talking about the wife. Very so some funny. of you, sorry, Very some funny. of you think you can approach a guy and talk to a guy anyhow, and he's supposed to treat you like he would treat his wife. You're not his flipping wife. That's why when some of you jump onto the platform and disrespect me or disrespect deny on the platform, I don't talk to you like, my, like you're my wife because you're not my wife. I will put you in your place. I will address you like an equal. And that's going to hurt your feelings because in that moment, you're going to remember, oh, snap, he's male. I'm female. I'm very direct. I'm very rational. I'm very honest. And I'm brutally honest sometimes. And that will hurt your feelings. A guy will get it. A man will get it. You will get hurt by it. So be very careful. <laughs> um, and that last part wasn't aimed directly at Bunny Gotcha. <laughs> but I'm just saying. In to her, though, to her, and, and, and to be fair, what, whatever your name was that he was addressing right there, what I would like to say is um, we do address women a lot, but we also address men a lot. And to be fair, Kofi has dedicated this entire year to speaking directly to men. So if you're unaware of that, or if you haven't seen that, then I have to say as a woman, I think you're being unfair because the entire year he's been talking to men. There are a lot of women who follow and there are a lot of men who follow as well. And there are a lot of men who are silent followers. And scientifically, women speak mm -hmm. twice as many words on a daily basis as men do. That is literally scientific. If you think that doesn't play out on the platforms too, where women are constantly commenting and you guys see us and we're vocal and we're all day long, we're da, 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 da. there are tons of men who are following. They don't talk. That's just their way. They don't have to do things the way that we do them. They don't have to do things in a way that makes us comfortable or that even makes us understand. If we are wise, which is why I teach the women's group, how to understand masculinity. Masculinity is not negative. It's not toxic. It's not a bad thing. It's actually beautiful and you want it and we need it. But my point was simply to say, to address the person who said, you all are always talking to the women. I want to be fair in saying, Kofi has dedicated this whole year to men. So if you can't acknowledge that, then you're not being fair. No, you're just like not it's being fair. That's, that's just the truth. And to answer your question about, okay, so in your opinion, where can men improve? First of all, I'm not really, like, you know, big on opinions. Um, you know, I like to go straight to scripture and the truth of scripture. But since you're asking for an opinion, where men can improve, we can make better choices about the women that we choose to be with, straight up. Because a lot of y'all really have no clue what we're about. Well, and even the... Betty, Betty, I will be so happy when you start to do this. <laughs> no, for real. Like, no, like... Let's be real, because like you think you think you're being, you know, um, engaging right now. We've told you what the topic is. We've told you what we're discussing right now. You're trying to move it to something you want to move it to. That's disrespectful. That like what you're doing right now is disrespectful. You'll see that there are guys following over here. 
when they engage, these guys engage the topic. They don't get all up in their feelings. They engage the topic. The dudes who get up all up in their feelings are the ones that we can tell, oh, you still have a lot of growing up to do. Okay. The way you're choosing to engage me on this issue right now tells me you really don't know that much about men. For real. And I'm not, no, you're not trying to understand both sides. If you were trying to understand both sides, you would wait until we're addressing the topic of men. That, that's what you'd be doing. No, you're not trying to just understand. You know what, like, I'm done with you. Anyway, um, D, shall we Yes, continue? so the point is, um, and I just keep saying this, ladies, I'm telling you, I was a feminist. I understand the programming. There was so much that is detrimental to what we are being taught and programmed with and all of the propaganda out there. And I'm just telling you, none of it is gonna help us to get along with our men. We are going to be defensive. We're going to be rebellious. We're not going to listen. We're going to um, assume the worst. We're always going to assume, because this is what we're programmed with, that men have an ulterior motive. And the truth is, this is a sad part about it. I'll just speak from experience. When a man is coming to us and he's speaking his heart and specifically telling us what he needs and what he needs is respect and honor and esteem and for us to look up to him and admire him and to honor him and to appreciate him when he's saying that he needs all these things what we are more than likely going to do because this is what the programming is for our entire culture we're going to be like no that's just your ego no you're just arrogant no you just want me to bow down to you no that's just stuff that you're saying because you want me to like treat you like a king and you want me to serve you and you want and we're going to fill in all of this stuff that we don't even know where it came from but it came from all this negative programming and all it is is a ton of different reasons for us not to meet his needs but it's so funny because when i said esteem respect honor appreciation to look up to him to admire him to place him in a high light um to place him on a pedestal you all might be thinking that i'm just talking out the side of my behind but the truth is if you go to ephesians 5 33 and you look at the amplified version and you compare it with the classic amplified and the new king king james version and the niv version and however many versions you get and you just open just that one scripture up and then that one scripture god is saying wise this is how i want you to treat your husband in order for him to be well taken care of every word i just said is in there every single one even on a pedestal yes god is saying put him on a pedestal esteem him admire him look up to him appreciate him respect him think well of him speak well of him it's all this stuff why is god saying it because it's needed in order for you to bring out the best in your man and in order for him to operate well like for him like oil makes a freaking car operate well gas makes a car operate well having everything in good operating order makes it operate well that is how much these fundamental principles make your man operate well and for every woman because we just have to be selfish who's going well what do i get out of it if he operates well he makes sure you operate well yes please you know it's 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 let me position it like this. Ladies, the man is supposed to initiate always. So if the man is initiating in love, and we're talking about love according to the scriptural definition of love, not, again, your communal definition, your societal definition, your traditional definition, and so on, but the biblical definition, because marriage comes from God. So if God says that you need love in marriage, you need to go look up what God says love is. When you understand what that is, when that man gives you that, this is the man that you're supposed to honor. This is the man you're supposed to respect. But what many women are doing is they're going for the first thing with a penis pulse and a paycheck, and they're thinking that they've, they've hit the lottery. Then they want to, you know, give this guy honor, and they want to give this guy respect. Now, you need to understand something. Whatever you honor, all right? It's a form of worship. So basically, you're saying, I love what you're doing. 
this guy may be cheating on you. When you honor the cheat, and you're out here talking about, well, he comes home to me, you're honoring that behavior. That's good. When he puts hands on you, and you honor him, guess what? You're honoring that behavior. He's not going to stop, because you're telling him that I like you when you do this. Okay. But then God tells you, this is the actual standard of a man that I want you to, to hold up. I want you to find someone patient, someone who's kind, someone who's protective, someone who 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 respects you, someone who humbles himself and 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 places your needs before his in certain situations. You know what I'm saying? Like this is God's standard. That's the man he's supposed to be going for. That's the man he's supposed to be saying yes to. But then because most of y'all think this thing is a game and because you're so all up in your ego and pride, you think you can change this guy. You're not going to change him. It's not, not a lot of times ego and pride. A lot of times I'm finding is it's what you said initially. They don't know. It's what you no. said. It's because the, it's, remember where I started. The culture says, think about it. Culture says mm -hmm. he's got money. And we're like, mm -hmm. we ain't got no money. That's a man. I'm saying yeah. that's not ego. That's misprogramming. Like nobody knows what is the standard. What, why do I teach a freaking women's group? that focuses on two things. It's broken mm. into two major qualities. One, mm. find the right guy. These are the qualities. I'm going into what the qualities are because I know for a fact they don't know what they're looking for. And everybody's lying to them. Everyone mm. has told them, you started this off talking about Jeezy. For the average girl, she's going to say, Jesus, Jeezy is what I'm looking for. And everybody's going to tell them, you're right, girl. You got Jeezy. That's a catch. Let's be <laughs> honest. Before he got into presidential, before anybody knew him the way that we know him now, let's be honest, everybody would have said Trump. There were a lot of people who would have been like, Trump. When you listen to, you know, I'm, I'm a really mess y'all up. There are a lot of people who voted for Trump who did not know Trump. Now, New Yorkers and people in the industry knew Trump. Yeah. Beyond yeah. that, a lot of the com country did not know him. When you ask a lot of these people, I'm going to mess you up, a lot of middle America, particularly middle white America, it had nothing to do with racism or anything like that. They really thought, he's a businessman, he's going to help me with my taxes, he's going to help me with my student loans, he's going to help me with my business, he's going to help the economy. They thought that, and then, I'm going to really mess y'all up, there are a lot of fundamental Christians who thought Obama went too far with gay marriage. I'm just telling you what I know. A lot of, mm. I'm, I'm not talking about me, I'm telling you what I know. A lot of fundamentalist Christians were like, he, Obama went too far to the left. Now we're gonna go with this other guy who says he's fundamental, mm. so we're going with that. What they mm. did not know though, and, and let's just, all I'm talking about is the picture. What mm. did they know? He's a businessman. They didn't know he's bankrupt 14 times. They didn't know that he's not worth a freaking penny. They didn't know- Why not? Huh? Why not, D? Why didn't they know? They didn't know because they didn't do their homework. Thank you. Because because everything's been there. It's it, that man has lived in the public eye for the last thirty years. So Thank if you. you looked at it, you would know that he stiffs small businessmen. He stiffs them. He does not pay the small contractors. And when the small contractors sue him, he buries them in paperwork because he's got mm -hmm. the money to do so. You would know he doesn't pay his debts. You know that he doesn't pay his taxes. You would know that mm -hmm. he's corrupt. You would know so mm -hmm. many different things about him. But all of that is beside the point. The only reason I brought him up is because my bottom line in saying that was, contrary to popular belief, prior to all of this coming out for the whole everything because of all these investigations because he's in the White House, there were a lot of people who would look at Trump and be like, well, it says he's a businessman. He's a billionaire businessman. Therefore, he's great. And I'm, that's my whole point is we have to start doing our due diligence. We have to start mm -hmm. understanding what a great catch is and what it's not. And I just want to say, I'm going to end it here and Kofi can take over. Um, if you think money makes a great husband, makes a great wife. I I'm going to leave you with what Dr. Phil said. Dr. Phil said, and I never forgot this because it, it, it chills down my spine. He said, I have never known a man or a woman who married for money who didn't end up paying for every single dime. Like they didn't earn every dime. Think about what that means. If you married for money, 
the person you're marrying knows you're marrying them for money. They're going to mm -hmm. make you pay for it. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. worth it. There are other things that you all need. I, I know it sounds simple. I'll say it one last time. Women need to be cherished and adored. Men need to be respected and honored. All of that is in Ephesians 5, 22 through 33. If you follow it, you're going to get what you want. If you don't follow it, y'all going to end up in these situations with people who are abusing you because they feel like they can, because they know good and well you have sold yourself out to whatever the thing is, whatever it is, fame, a country club, uh, money, a, a great house, uh, whatever it is. I don't know. You, she, he made you a mama. He made you a daddy. What? I, I don't know, but... I don't know. Yeah, like, <clears throat> look, like this whole conversation started with um, how, how, you know, um, specifically, you know, my whole point was black women need to a understand how God sees you. Okay, um, in the context of you as a woman, and then how God sees you as a wife to your husband. If you guys are not going to take that on board and you guys are not going to start making the shift now, you're going to be complaining about other races taking your men for a very long time. A very long time. That's the first thing. The second thing is you're going to be losing your men at a phenomenal rate. Because, look, for... You need to understand, like D D started her 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 um contribution by talking about the economic injustices, slavery, the oppression we've all been through. Black women have been oppressed. Guess what? So have black men. And you know how they used um um you know who was used to oppress black men? Black women. Black women were used to oppress black men. Back in slave times, what they would do is they would break the men. Then they will use the women to control the little boys to conduct themselves in a subservient fashion and submit themselves to the master because the men were not able to do anything to protect them. Okay, so the women gained ascendancy and prominence. You will find in many slave plantations, they had female, black um, um, uh, female supervisors. Because the whole thing was to break the spirit of the black man. Fast forward to this modern age. What's happening? Black men's education is not a priority. Okay, the imprisonment of black men is, is a huge um, agenda item around the world. Okay? Um, uh, the the, the um, advancement of black women in corporate. Last week, someone sent me um, um, a post uh, that's um, some white billionaire put up talking about he only hires black women because they're hardworking and they're this and they're That's that and blah, blah. Yeah. And if people are getting all excited, yeah, this is how it's supposed to be, blah, blah. No, you, like, you don't understand. You're getting pimped. You're getting pimped. And y'all, the, the same ones who come home and disrespect your man because some white dude put you in that position and you think you're powerful and you think you don't need this man anymore. But you'll be the same one complaining when this man decides to go date a white waitress instead of a, 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 a black executive. Because you've forgotten who you are and you've forgotten who he is. Now, the tide is turning. Brothers like me are beginning to re remind brothers who they really are. And you need to understand something. In as much as we have been commanded to love our wives, like Dee was saying earlier, there is a command for the wife to honor and respect the husband who loves her. And unfortunately, like a lot of the dudes I see showing their wives love, don't get that honor, don't get that respect. Then this woman has the nerve to turn on the guy and be on some like, well, I mean, like, how are you going to leave me? Like, what, he's supposed to stay and put up with the abuse? Because that's what y'all do? Because y'all don't know any better? He knows better. He knows better, so he has to leave. And brothers like me are going to keep reminding brothers to push. Because contrary to what many of you think, a man is not supposed to stay in the same house as a woman who is contentious. He is not supposed to stay in the same house with a woman who is breaking his family up. 
So for as long as you do that thinking you're being strong, independent, powerful black women, understand you're being a disruptive force in your own home, in your own community. Stop it. Stop it. We are here to love our black women. Trust me, we, we will do anything for the right woman who is willing to honor what we have to give her. But we're, but we're, like, we're going to stop casting our pearls before swine. And if you guys want to keep idolizing your Beyonce's and your Solange's and all these, these people who disrespect their men in public and disrespect themselves in public because you're trying to be just like them and trying to be a power couple, that's not what a power couple looks like. Not in God's economy. Not in God's kingdom. Humility is where it's at. On both sides. Both of us. It takes humility for a man to love a woman like Christ loved the church. Because guess what? The church did not deserve Christ's love. And ladies, you do not deserve your man's love. You don't deserve it. God commands him to love you. You have done nothing to deserve that kind of self-sacrificial love. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But he has to earn your honor and your respect. And when he has done so, give it to him and stop playing with him because y'all are playing a dangerous game, a really dangerous game, and the other races are watching. That's why they, like, they're all coming here on, oh, my goodness, like chocolate on, on sale. I'll take two, please. Because y'all don't know how to treat your men. Not all of you, obviously. I'm talking to the, one, the ones who are here talking nonsense earlier on about you only talk to the men. Uh, 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 you don't talk to the women. You don't talk to the men. I kicked her off the like uh, the platform now. <laughs> like she's gone now. I blocked her. <laughs> but real talk, we need to get aligned. We need to get aligned. When someone like Dee puts together a course where she's teaching you how to relate to your man, pay attention. Pay attention, because a lot of Female coaches don't want to deal with females anymore. No, no, no. Y'all are crazy. I'm they don't want to deal with I'm going to tell you how crazy you are. I rebuked a woman on the platform earlier this week. I specifically said, ladies, please be silent on this post. This woman decides to completely ignore that and speak out anyway. Not only does she decide to speak out, I asked the men to open their hearts and tell us, I don't know, answer some question for us. Give us their insights. And that's the reason why I did it. I do everything for a reason. This mm -hmm. woman not only ignored what I asked her to do in total rebellion, um, she then critiqued the men, told, uh, criticized the men, corrected the men, did all this stuff that, and this is the part that women don't understand. To her, she felt like, oh, here's a place where the men are talking. Let me go ahead and just give them my two cents. What she didn't understand is everything she was doing was screaming in certain ways, you know? But she doesn't know because she's so indoctrinated. She doesn't mm -hmm. even know how she's coming off. So she disrespects me, disrespects the platform, disrespects the classroom, and in, on top of that, threatens the possibility of certain men who are going to hear what she has to say and then immediately go away yep. and not not contribute what the rest of us are desiring as a classroom, which mm -hmm. is the insights into the hearts and minds of men. So yep. she and I go back and forth a couple of times and I finally go, listen, and then I tell her off. And what in my telling her off, all I did was tell her the truth. You're not gonna get along well with men. You don't understand men. You're gonna have a difficult time dealing with the men in your life. You are rebellious. You are entitled. You do not listen. You are self-seeking. And then I went into scripture, 1 Corinthians 4 through 8, uh, 13, excuse me, 4 through 8, and it literally says, love is not self-seeking. Um, mm -hmm. And I said, and as a result of this, you're probably not going to have a good time of it. And I said, don't shoot the messenger. Do you know that I got a, a message from Instagram today saying that that girl reported me for bullying? Yeah, <laughs> I can believe it. I'm going to be getting a lot of those going forward because I'm not taking this nonsense anymore. Wait, we got 14 hold up, seconds. though, because it mm -hmm. doesn't end there. We got um, 14 seconds going. Like, should okay. we continue? Yeah, let's, let's continue. Come back. 